Kidney function declines during aging. And that's what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got GFR estimate or EGFR as a biomarker of kidney function plotted against age on the x-axis. And this is from about 18 years old to 95 years old. And for both men and women, we can see declines for EGFR, again, as a biomarker of kidney function. Now, inherent in this measurement is creatinine, as creatinine is used to derive EGFR. Now, blood levels of creatinine accumulate in the presence of poor kidney function, but they also increase during aging, which is what we can see here. On the y-axis, we, we have serum creatinine plotted against age. And again, this is from about 18 to 90 years old. And here we can see that age-related increase for serum creatinine levels. But creatinine may not be the best estimator of kidney function in people older than 40 years. And that's in part because of a wide creatinine variability for people old, older than 40. You can see that some people older than 40 have values as high as 14 milligrams per deciliter when compared with people younger than 40 where that variability doesn't exist. Now, a couple of factors may be underlying the variability for creatinine during aging. And one of them is because creatinine is proportional to muscle mass, which is what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got circulating levels of creatinine plotted against muscle mass. And here we can see that significant association between the two variables. In other words, Higher muscle mass is correlated with higher circulating levels of creatinine, and conversely, lower muscle mass is significantly correlated with lower levels of circulating levels of creatinine. Now, note that muscle mass declines during aging. So now we have two opposing factors going on. So aging is associated with a reduction in muscle mass, and when considering the association for muscle mass with creatinine, also lower creatinine. But aging uh, is also associated with higher creatinine, thereby highlighting reduced kidney function as we know that creatinine accumulates when kidney function is relatively poor. So when considering these potential limitations for creatinine, studies have shown that cystatin C may be a better, better, bio, sorry, better biomarker of kidney function. And I won't go into that data in this video. I want to focus on age-related changes and all-cause mortality risk for cystatin C. So first, what's optimal in terms of age-related changes? And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got circulating levels of cystatin C plotted against age, and this is from about 30 to 100 years old. And in people who have no clinical risk factors, but note that the data for people who do have clinical risk factors is the same, a similar slope, we can see that there is an age-related increase for cystatin C. Now, in youth, cystatin C is characterized by values pretty close to 0.7 milligrams per liter. All right, so what about all-cause mortality risk? And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got survival probability plotted against survival time. And note that this is after the initial assessment of cystatin C up to about 18 years later, who was still alive and who died. So when compared with people who had initial cystatin C levels of 0.7 milligrams per liter, we can see that almost all of those people after about 16 to 17 years were still alive. In contrast, people who had cystatin C levels that were greater than 1.08, milligrams per liter, about 50% of that population died about 17 to 18 years later. So from this chart, from the, these data, we can see that relatively higher cystatin C is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. Now, cystatin C is also a top predictor of biological age, and we can see that in this study. And note that this study didn't have any pretty pictures to illustrate that point, but I linked to its paper and all of the other papers in the video's description. What we're looking at here, though, is on the y-axis, we've got uh, uh, demographics and biomarkers and how they associate with all-cause mortality risk. With higher levels of the biomarker being associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk in red, and then higher levels of the biomarker being associated with a decreased all-cause mortality risk in blue. So atop the list, the, it shouldn't be a surprise that chronological age is a top predictor or is has the strongest association with all-cause mortality risk. So the older we live, the increased chance of death that we have, unfortunately. As a second, uh, a second uh, close to age is being a man. So that shouldn't be a surprise either as women are well known to live longer than men. So being a man, has, there's an increased all-cause mortality risk relative to women. But note that the top pr uh, predictor in terms of being associated with all-cause mortality risk is then is not metabolic health, i.e. glucose or HbA1c, glycated hemoglobin, it's cystatin C, at least in this study. So we can see that cystatin C is more strongly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk relative to glucose and HbA1c in this population. 
In second place, though, is the red blood cell distribution width, or RDW. And for those that are familiar with the channel, that the RDW shouldn't be a surprising name, as that, that's a top predictor of biological age using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge. And I'll have more on the RDW in the next video. Now, also note that the top predictor for a reduced all-cause mortality risk is creatinine. And one reason for that may be knowing that higher muscle mass is significantly correlated with higher creatinine, this may be a higher muscle mass is associated with a lower risk of death for all causes story. Now, a major focus of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. And when considering that cystatin C may be a better biomarker relative to creatinine, and when considering cystatin C seems to be a quote unquote powerful predictor of all cause mortality risk, that brings us to what's my data. So for the January 15th, 2024 test, I measured it for the first time and it's relatively youthful better than age expected, 0.72 milligrams per liter. So kidney function at this point is not a weakness in my data. I've got other weaknesses in my data, but for now, kidney function is not one of them. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, and a totally different profile, or almost totally different profile than the at-home metabolomics, green tea, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tracking brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.